If you've watched this channel, you guys know I absolutely love Joe Milton. I think the guy is absolutely awesome, his story's great, and just overall, he's always been one of my favorite players. I've always been rooting for him, and I've always wanted to see him succeed, and after spending time at both Michigan and Tennessee, there was always questions about if he could make it to the NFL. In the weeks leading up to the draft, many expected Milton to go undrafted or fall to the 6th or 7th round. Well, he ended up getting drafted, and he got drafted to the most interesting situation he could possibly be put in. After the New England Patriots decided to draft Drake May with their third overall pick, they also decided to take a flyer on Joe Milton in the later rounds. This is absolutely genius for the Patriots, and it's a really interesting spot for, for both Joe Milton and Drake May to be in. Drake is the guy drafted to be the franchise leader, but if he whiffs or if he falls behind, then Joe Milton's the guy they're going to try to develop to take his spot. It's going to be quite interesting to see, but Joe Milton III is ready for the moment. He's been a backup many times in his career, and he's always been doubted. Still though, the Patriots got the best valued quarterback in this year's draft in the later rounds, and today I want to introduce you to who he is. We're going to go through how Joe Milton III got to this point, how he was compared to Cam Newton coming out of high school, his interesting career at both Michigan and Tennessee, and how he could translate to the NFL, especially with the Pats. But before we get started, and if you're a big fan of college football, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you want to support today's video, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover next. Now let's talk about Joe Milton. Going back in time, Joe Milton III has always been an athlete. He started playing football when he was only five years old, and actually when he grew up, one of his hobbies was chasing rabbits through the Everglades. Kind of a random hobby, but it helped him become agile. Interestingly enough, he's also related to former NFL wide receiver Anquan Bolden, so the fact that he originally played wide receiver makes a ton of sense. Eventually though, he'd end up switching positions as he would move to Orlando, and then went to Olympia High School. That school famously produced big time quarterback DeAndre Francois just a few years earlier, and when he got there, he switched to QB and immediately made an impact on the field. One high school coach told him, quote, nobody in the world looks like you. You look like an action figure. He eventually lit his high school on fire as he was an athletic freak, but his coach was somewhat cautious. He was worried that him getting recruited so early would end up hurting his education, so he actually tried to hide Joe from scouts the best he could. I don't know if I agree with that or not, but it didn't end up working. During his junior year, he threw for 1,500 yards and 17 touchdowns, and combining that with his rocket for an arm, he got his first offer from Iowa State. By the time he was a senior, his arm was no secret anymore, but some scouts were worried about his accuracy. One scout said, quote, right now, he's like a pitcher with a 100 mile per hour fastball who needs to develop his other pitches. A whole bunch of Power 5 teams wanted Joe though, as according to 24-7 Sports, Milton was a four-star recruit, the number nine pro-style quarterback, and the 204th best player in the class of 2018. One of those teams that wanted them was Michigan, who offered both him and Dorian Thompson Robinson. DTR was a five-star recruit, and would eventually end up committing to UCLA. Joe ended up going to Michigan over Georgia and Florida, and this was a huge get for the Wolverines. Harbaugh was excited to get him on campus, and when he was at Michigan, he really wasn't bothered by the competition that would await him. At the time, Wilton Spate, Dylan McCaffrey, and Shea Patterson were on the roster, and he would end up developing and continuing to get better throughout the years. Going into 2020, many thought the job would be between him and Dylan McCaffrey, but McCaffrey unexpectedly transferred away, so Milton, I guess, by facto got the start. He ended up throwing for 1,077 yards with four touchdowns and four interceptions. He started five games during that 2020 season and was eventually benched in favor of Cade McNamara, who started that game against Rutgers. Unfortunately, during that time, he suffered an injury, had a three-game losing streak, and the way that Michigan fell apart was not good. But truth be told, he had been playing with a torn ligament in his throwing hand, but the media didn't care and basically ripped him to shreds. His former quarterback coach said, quote, he was trying to be a warrior and to fight through it, but it was everything. Imagine trying to hold a football and you can't feel it. You can't put pressure on it with your thumb. That's going to make you unsure as a passer. You look at how he played at Minnesota, and people are asking, why did he have such a drop-off after that? Well, what do you think happened? His ligament was torn. In total at Michigan, he was somewhat disappointing as he threw for five touchdowns compared to six interceptions. Wasn't exactly the greatest quarterback in Michigan football history, but now he'd be off to a new school. He decided to leave Michigan in 2021 after spending three years there, and he wanted to be closer to home and make it easier for his family to see him play. And he also really liked Josh Heupel, Tennessee's offense, and their coaches. He decided to commit to Tennessee, and then offensive coordinator Alex Golish said, quote, Joe's incredibly smart, incredibly talented, and he's like as talented as a quarterback as I've ever seen. Going into 2021, Milton would eventually beat out Hendon Hooker for the starting job, but very quickly, defenses would adjust to his play, and he once again found himself as the backup quarterback. 
He continually overthrew receivers, and his game just wasn't polished enough. Hendon Hooker had a huge breakout 2021 season, and then followed that up with a ginormous 2022 season. Milton didn't pout or transfer though. He remained a strong leader, was the backbone of that quarterback room, and gained respect from all his teammates. He knew his time would potentially come, as when Hendon Hooker went down against South Carolina, Milton was back in action. His first start would come against Vanderbilt, where they won 56-0. That was great and all, but Milton's Orange Bowl performance against Clemson is where he really began to stand out. In that win over the Tigers, he threw for 251 yards and three touchdowns. He also had that pass that pretty much went into outer space, and everyone was talking about Joe Milton for 2023. Because of everything going on in 2020, he had that extra year of eligibility, and he decided to use it. Could he be like Kenny Pickett and save his career and go off to the NFL, or would he flame out? Well, honestly, it seemed it was somewhere in the middle. At times, he looked great, and at other times, he looked like he really hadn't improved. In his final season at Tennessee, he ended up throwing for 2,800 yards with 20 touchdowns to just 5 picks. While those numbers were solid, he really did disappear in a few games and was especially atrocious against Mizzou. He did have his moments, though, and led Tennessee to a pretty decent season, and led Tennessee to a good season. In total at Tennessee, he threw for 32 touchdowns with 5 picks and just over 4,000 yards. He won't go down as Peyton Manning, but he also won't go down as Quentin Dormady either. Following his 2023 campaign, he obviously had to head off to the NFL Draft, where he's now being talked about as a guy who could go later in the draft. Pretty quickly, I'm going to give you a scouting report for him, as we're going to talk about his biggest strengths and weaknesses. The biggest asset Joe Milton has to offer is his arm. Typically, teams are willing to look past a player with an accuracy if the guy has elite arm talent. Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen had heavy question marks going into the draft, but the one place they didn't have question marks was their arm. Now they're considered two of the best quarterbacks in the entire NFL, and he can make some of these same throws, or at least has the potential to. He's had a great ability to have a deep ball if the play breaks down, his pocket presence is solid, and he's shown he has decent vision for college. He only threw five picks at Tennessee and he started a year and a half there pretty much. Another thing that'll help Joe in the league is definitely his frame. He's six foot five and 235 pounds, which makes it difficult for an average corner or safety to bring down, and they'll likely have to get to him with linebackers or edge rushers instead. He also has a decent amount of starting experience, and his overall athleticism is great. There are a couple areas where Joe needs to work on though. He doesn't really have that much touch on his deep balls, as he mostly just throws them downfield, hoping a receiver can catch up to them. Unfortunately, he only completed 39% of his passes, in which the play was 10 yards downfield, and while he has enough athleticism to escape the pocket, he is by no means no Cam Newton. He will sometimes force a bad throw instead of taking 5 or 6 yards in a first down. He also has a tendency to throw hospital passes that could get receivers hurt. In general, he has a great arm, but not necessarily the touch to know how to use it. If an NFL team falls in love with his arm and has a great quarterback coach and staff, or at minimum, a solid backup. If not, he may not even make the roster. But I do think that there is a place for Joe Milton in the NFL. Scouts don't seem overly impressed with him, but he also has enough upside to make things interesting in the later rounds. He's definitely a good pickup for a team looking to build, and there aren't that many guys who are prized with the arm that he has. I'd argue he's probably already top five in the NFL in terms of actual arm strength, but if somehow, some way, someone can get him to be polished, I truly think he would be a threat in the NFL and could be a really good player. He already has that athleticism in that arm, he has a decent amount of experience, and mentally, he does seem to have it. He didn't give up, he didn't transfer, and despite having injuries, he was willing to play through it, was willing to be a backup, and was ready when his number was called. My opinion is also an underrated trait, as a player's mental game is honestly just important in the NFL. There are plenty of guys with great stats, great arms, and great athleticism who've never lived up to their potential because they just didn't have it in their brain. I think Joe Milton has it in his brain, and he also has God-given talent with his arm. If somehow, some way that can be developed, he can be the steal of this year's draft, and many will wonder, how did he slip to this late in the draft? Well, this past weekend, we ended up finding Joe Milton III's draft fit. He was taken with the 193rd overall pick in the sixth round by the New England Patriots. After six quarterbacks were taken in the first 12 picks, no one else was taken until midway through the fifth round when Spencer Rattler was taken, and after that, you had Joe Milton. Honestly, Milton said he was kind of surprised that New England called him. He said, quote, I was kind of like, I just had all the hats laid out, and I never knew where I would end up. I was just waiting on any phone call. It's a wonderful moment, and I'm pretty much speechless at this point. I'm kind of fumbling over myself, so I am kind of speechless, but you know, I'm blessed by the best, and I'm happy about this moment. This is really interesting, as now he'll join a Patriots quarterback rotation that includes Bailey Zappi, Nathan Rourke, Jacoby Brissett, and their draft pick Drake May. May is obviously the guy of the future for them, as they wouldn't use the number 3 overall pick if they didn't believe in him, but Joe Milton right now is a good insurance policy. 
after some rumors that he would transition to tight end, that ended up falling through, and he said he's going to compete for that quarterback position. The guy is 6 foot 5 and has a cannon for an arm. He'll get a chance to probably sit on the bench for a year or two, and maybe if Drake May doesn't work out, or Joe Milton is ahead of schedule, he'll get his chance. It's a safe bet that Joe Milton would not play anytime soon, and if you're the Patriots GM, you hope that Milton doesn't play anytime soon, because that means May was terrible, but we'll just have to really wait and see what happens here. Everyone knows that Milton has franchise potential, but it's just that. It's always been potential. We'll see if he ends up living up to it, and if you're a Patriots fan, what do you think of this pick? If you're a Tennessee fan, what do you think of Joe Milton III, and how do you think he will fit in the NFL, and does he have any shot? Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you're to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.